All right, quick update. I wanted to just kind of show again the process we're going through here. Uh, this is going to be the control panel for Wallace Junction. Um, actually, behind the control panel. Uh, I do not claim to be an expert wireman. Um, <clears throat> just doing what I can to keep things neat. I'm sure there's some more sophisticated techniques I could be following, so please excuse me if I don't follow the uh, the appropriate techniques. But uh, basically, that's going to be behind the scenes for this. And one thing that always amazes me is, you know, this is a relatively simple control panel here. I mean, basically, it's got, you know, some LEDs, <clears throat> couple switches and stuff and and it's you look at it you go yeah okay no big deal right but man you get behind it and you start wiring stuff and it's always more than you think I mean look at that look at this freaking mess I have here so uh, most of this are the LED <clears throat> leads um, I do have some leads here from the double pull double throws are going to be for the switches over there um, the branch line I'm calling it SMB1 and SMB2, which is here again, part of the mess. Um, they're non dispatcher controlled, so they're the straight manual switches. Um, and then <clears throat> I have the, the two crossovers, um, they're going to have the switch in it, um, utilizing this little board that I think I, I showed earlier. Um, that basically, if it's down in motor, um, it is in say computer dispatcher control, if it's in hand normal, it's in hand control and this LED comes on um, again that's worked out through the circuitry <clears throat> that I showed you here and then in reverse obviously puts it in reverse in all cases these LEDs will light uh, normal these two will be on reverse this vice for you know similar here um, and then for these this one here also has it not a crossover but again this can be dispatcher or local uh, controlled by the crew <clears throat> similar concept there uh, again, these are the two that are in, in the interchange yard, just complete manual. Actually, in the real world, they probably would just be, you know, there would be ground throws that the crew would throw. Uh, this was added late, so it's not on. That's the, the pit track. And again, I apologize, this is, this is a mess over here, but the track here on the left, that's the pit track that we added. And I'm going to add probably just an into a separate <clears throat> little uh, uh, plate here on the fascia that I bought from... I believe CTC products makes one where kind of you can take it and very very similar to this it's just a different plate that I'll mount right on the fascia since it was a late ad um, this is the the diagram again you get into this man this gets uh, pretty complicated pretty quick um, so I don't mind chicken scratch this is just my initial drawing um, that I'm, I want to do a little bit better I mean ideally I would label everything but uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to actually label everything, but this shows all the connections and um, the wires coming in from the switch machines themselves. I use six conductor, basically telephone, uh, six conductor 24 gauge to run those in. And I actually know where they go here on the board and it, lo it looks like a freaking mess. But uh, yeah, basically these are the leads from the LEDs coming down um, and then they run to the appropriate points on the terminal boards. <clears throat> this is SMB1, SMB2, and this is SM456, uh, the, the wires coming in. Um, 4, 5, and 6 are actually physically, you know, actually going to be powered through the SMC12 card or the, the part that I cut um, using N1, N2, and N3. Um, so that's the 12 volt power going to that. 5 volt power uh, coming into here. What I'm doing is to actually light these. Again, I don't know if it's the actual most elegant way on the previous layout. I actually did it with um, reverse wired uh, LEDs uh, in the power line to 1 and 8. But what I'm going to do is basically bring 5 volts in, go out to the switch machine to the common point of the, of the contact they have there. And then based on the turnout position, you know, for example, come in at 4 and then either 2 or 3 depending on how the switch is thrown. Come back go through a resistor and then out to the LED and then to ground. Um, so that's what this is. This is the 5 volts coming in which then will run out through the cable out to the switch machine to contact 4. Uh, 2 and 3 will come back here and here through the resistor, through the resistor and then up here this is the positive, the anode lead of the LED on the control panel and then what I decided to do 
I was thinking about just to save, I basically took all of the cathodes, or the negatives, so to speak, of the lights, uh, put them all together, and I'll bring one heavier gauge, probably an 18 gauge ground wire down, just to keep some of the wires out. And I'll probably just mount this in here, um, and then just bring a ground wire down, and connect to the ground terminal board here. Um, so you can see I also have the 5 volts going to the the, these aren't the actual ones I'm going to use, I just have them sitting there uh, because what I wanted to do was get all the wiring done on the board before I mount it up here, it's a little bit easier to work um, so I, I cut all the all the various wires and, and, and ran them and made sure they're the right sizes these will then come off um, and I have the ones right now, they're, they're just kind of hanging right here but they're going to mount there um, so I want to get that done, Here's well, there's all the the various conductors for the, you can see there, the other, all the uh, six conductor cables coming in. I'm going to mount this board. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be visible very well. Apologize for the darkness under here, but I'm going to put it in here, down this way, so I work on it from the back. Um, that's where the things are running. Here's more of the, of the cables coming in from the switch machines, from the terminal boards by the machines. Again, since I have the 12 volts and some fancy LEDs, I'll probably put an LED light up here with a switch so I can get some light working on that. So, I want to get that done. Unfortunately, I've got my uh, Air National Guard duty this weekend, so I probably won't uh, be able to show till next week. Actually, everything in installed and hopefully actually working. Um, but again, i got to tap off the 12 volt bus coming here. And that goes here. Also, one wire will go up to the switch machines, the manual machines for the branch. Bring the 5 volt in that powers the items here. Bring a ground in, which I have those buses all run, so that's just a matter of probably a suitcase connector and bringing them in. Um, somehow get all the uh, 600 cables in here, everything stripped, and run them and, grant and, and land them where they belong, and then fire it up and make sure it all works. So, hopefully, it'll go okay. Um, like I said, this is the actual chicken scratch of, of that panel right there. This is just to help me figure out how to wire the switches and everything on this. Um, so this being the, the normal reverse wired uh, double pole, double throws for the, call them the manual switches. This being the double pole, double throw center off switches here uh, used with these circuits for the motor and then the hand control and just kind of figuring out how I'm going to wire those. And I had to actually think about these because I had them sitting there. Obviously you got to be careful when you're doing this because I want it to sit like that on the control panel with the toggle down and be in motor so it's important how I wire that um, you know realizing that when it's sitting like this and down is actually, see what I mean? <laughs> like this. So when this comes up, you can see that's actually down. So I had to think about that. Again, I don't claim to be the sharpest tool in the shed. Um, so I want to make sure I'm thinking about it. Because I want to wire these up, uh, actually solder the wires I need back of the bench and not solder underneath. So I'm going to solder them with long enough. Uh, leads coming off to, to run them where I need to um, either in, in here or on this particular board here so uh, just want to give it a, a brief update of that again everything's kind of a mess here in this area because I'm working actually on the layout but uh, trying to get things uh, moving along here again just want to touch on I love this crimper it's great um, there's my selection of uh, insole crimp crimps uh, from Molex love it Great! It's a, it's one of the best things I bought. The best sixty bucks I ever spent. Um, just so much easier than the old hand crimp. So, next update probably next weekend. Uh, if Steve goes ahead and puts this up this week, um, again tonight I'm going to try to get this physically mounted so it's up because I've got all I can do pretty much on the board now. Now I got to start running the wires to the control cabinet and bringing the wires in from the six conductor cables to go where they belong. Um, so next week. Um, hopefully again, I'll, I'll do another quick update of it all done, wired up, installed, and like I said, 
fingers crossed, knock on wood, it'll all work. Um, and then I also want to take this and actually redraw it um, so it makes some sense. So in the future I have a, a record of what I did in case you ever have to troubleshoot. And you will have to troubleshoot. Um, I would have liked to, to label these wires, but they're just too darn small. Uh, my normal experience, I work for GE in the power transformer business and have done a bit of control work. Um, not actual wiring, but reading wiring diagrams and the way GE does it is a little different, I think, than, than most. But all these wires will be labeled with the destination. So this wire is actually running to here. So there would be a label on this wire. If this was TB, terminal board SM, or terminal board 1, just to call it something, this was terminal board A. This would say TB1, 1, because that's where it's going. And this would say TBA1. So, um, it, this would not say the actual where it's landed. It's, it tells you where it's going. That's what I'm used to. So, But I don't have the room, I don't think, to label all these as much as I'm, I might like to. So I did go ahead and with, through continuity, I did verify that they're all where they should be uh, with a fluke meter just, just for fun. Um, but then I, I do want to get this drawn up a little bit neater. Uh, than this chicken scratch right here, so I have a record of it. And then, of course, we've got to move on to that control cabinet and get that one done. Very similar. Um, it has the same, you know, rough same number. It's just got the, uh, well, actually, it's a lot easier uh, than this one here. It's, you can see it's quite a bit less. But then, when I get into these bad mamma jammas, this is going to be a lot of fun uh, doing those. Um, and I'm realizing I hope I have enough room um, under the layout to mount the additional board I'm going to need. Again, one thing to consider, when you start wiring stuff, you get a lot of wires real fast. Things get very, very, very crowded very, very quickly, so do the best you can. Leave more room than you think you're going to need uh, when you're laying stuff out. Again, I wish I had made this cabinet um, a little bit bigger. I think it'll be fine, um, but I was my initial intent was to put, for example, this type of stuff in that. Well, you can see, given the size of this, there is no way that's going to happen. Uh, hence my need to mount an additional board on the back uh, to do that. So, all right, real quick, just wanted to kind of show you that. Again, do not claim to be an expert at this. Uh, just kind of showing how we're doing. Hopefully it might uh, spur some conversation or some thought uh, when you're laying out your, uh, your, your circuits and whatnot. And again, my word of advice, leave more room than you think. Uh, think about what you want to do ahead of time as much as possible. You can never think of everything. And again, that's just a hobby. So if something goes wrong, you can always fix it later on. Um, but it does take some, uh, the more thought you put into it, and the more you can catch, the easier it goes when you're doing the actual installation and the wiring. It takes a lot of time. Uh, so more to come. Hopefully next week we'll show you the update with everything working. Thanks for watching.